Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Flavio and I am a software engineer. If you're wondering how to create your first AWS tab function, a few lambdas, and automate the deployment using Terraform, this is the right tutorial for you. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, because I will post more videos and share them with you. In the agenda for today, we have Quick AWS IAM configuration, this will be used for the Terraform. Create a few lambdas using Java. Create Terraform deployment scripts. Create a step function and bind all of them together. Deploy everything and run. So let's get our hands dirty and jump right to the AWS console to configure the user and roles to be used later by our Terraform scripts. Okay, so let's search for IAM. Then we go to users and then add new user and then let's create a new user let's say terraform user and then click on the programmatic access next um, yeah let's add some uh, some permissions here sqs and then some im access s3 and everything you might need for this user. SNS Step functions of course and Lambda. Then click on next. You can see the tags but let's not do tags right now. And then create the user. Okay, that's it. And now you can see that we have the access key ID here. And if you click show, you can see the secret access. With that information in hand, let's go to the terminal or if you're on Windows, the command prompt. And then let's type AWS configure and then dash dash profile and the name of the profile you want. Let's do dev01. And then let's use the access key we just created, and then the secret access key, and then default region, let's just do US is 2 and don't worry about the output format. Now we need a role for our lambdas and step function, let's go roles, create role, and then click on lambda, next, and then let's create the policy, and let's do the policy later tags yeah no tags for now reveal let's put a role name let's say lambda role okay create role now let's take care of that policy okay go back here attach policies let's do create new policy and we'll open a new window and then let's go json and then let's type our own policy just because it's more fun. Okay, let's do allow here. And then let's type all the resources we need to allow. Logs, SNS, states, SQS, S3, lambdas, invoke function, IM, IM, and some CloudWatch. Okay, that should be good. And this will be on all resources. Review policy. No errors. Let's put a name for it. Let's say Lambda role policy. And then create. Okay, we should be all set now. Let's just not forget to tie that policy back to our role. Now click here and attach policy. Okay, one more thing we need to do, trust relationships. Let's edit this. We need to add the states into here. Otherwise we cannot start the step function. States, okay, good. Now let's just confirm there's nothing else to be done. And uh, to copy the ARM, just go back to roles, select your role, and your ARM will be on top. 
So this is my IntelliJ. I have a new project here that has a POM file. So let's just take a look at the POM file and see what needs to be done to include the required libraries for AWS. I'll do some change here in the dependency management of the POM file, but don't worry, I'll share the code in the description below. So don't worry about copying anything. So let's add here the dependency for AWS and then I like this library called JSON path from JWay. I use that to extract some JSON path and then let's add the Lambda requirements, Lambda core and Lambda events. Finally, let's start to write the code for the Lambda. I have this package here, Lambda. I'm going to use that new class. Let's call it validate Lambda. And to make this a Lambda, you need to implement the request handler from AWS. And then the input and output. The input is the object for now, and my output is going to be my step function object. Let's create this class. This will be my object to exchange between my lambdas inside my step function, so my steps. So just make things easier this way. So let's have some attributes in here. So I'd like to create two properties, a bucket and a key. So in the future, we're going to try to trigger this lambda from an S3 event that's going to have the bucket name and the key. And for now, we're just going to use these properties inside our input to start the step function to simulate this event. Assuming in our example, we're going to have the validate lambda and the process lambda. So let's just create two other attributes that we can return some error code and error message between the two steps. And then it will make it easier to see the results from one step and the other in AWS console. Let's just call it uh, step result for a lack of better term. Okay, let's create this class. Java new class, step result. And this step result will have a code and a message. Okay, let's just do some code generation now with getter and setter. Let's also create the two string method. Why not? I love IntelliJ. Okay. Let's do the same here. To string as well. Okay, our model objects are good. Let's go back to the lambda. Okay, so we have the handle request, step function object, let's log the input, let's extract the bucket name and bucket key. This is the JSON path library I was talking about. So now let's do some validation. Now let's just return 200 validation successful. And that's it. Let's create the next lambda. Let's call it process lambda. New Java class, process lambda. Let's do the same thing, implements, request handler, and then here my input is going to be my step function object, and my output is also going to be my step function object. So I don't have to deal with the input as an object, just like the other lambda. Okay, let's just skip the implementation and return to 100, process complete. So I just had an idea. Let's create another lambda, the exception lambda. So, in case there is an exception, it will fall back to that lambda. And then we can uh, drive that redirect inside the step function. So, it's going to be called the exception lambda 
Let's copy the implementation from the other Lambda. Because in this world everything is copy and paste. Okay, same thing. Step function object input and output. Okay, copy and paste. Our lambdas are good now, so let's go to the Terraform part. In the Terraform, let's create a module called Core, and this can be reused if we have different environments in our project. New file, let's call it vars.tf. So in Terraform, any file with extension tf will be processed by Terraform. So this will be our definitions of the variables we need for our modules. Let's do SNS topic. In the future, we're going to use it. And then environment prefix, region, lambda role ARN, yes, we need that, and the jar file name. Okay, let's create another file now just for our lambdas. So lambdas.tf. In Terraform, to create a lambda, you just need to do resource and then AWS lambda function and whatever name of your function you want, demo validate in this case, and then the function name you want, I concatenate it with my environment prefix, and then this is my handler. It should be set as your full package plus your class name, column, column, and the method that you want to call. In this case, handle request, but it could be any method name. Then my runtime is Java 8, and for my role, we're going to receive a parameter of the ARN of the role that we created in AWS console in the beginning of this video. This is the role that my Lambda is going to assume when it's running. And for the file name, I'm going to receive a parameter of the file name and the directory structure is this one here. So three folders down and then target. This is the structure of my Maven project. Source code hash is used to calculate the diff between local file and the file in AWS. If the file is different, then it's going to be updated. If the file is the same, then Terraform is just going to, not going to apply any change to that Lambda. Memory size, timeout, and environment variables. This is how you can set them. In a future video, we're going to use the SNS topic. For now, let's just um, going to leave it here. Copy and paste time. Let's do the other lambdas. Now the demo process. Don't forget to update the handler with the correct class name and method name. Everything else is the same. Demo exception lambda. Okay, handler is correct. Now let's create the new file for the step function. Let's call it step function dot tf. To create a step function in Terraform is very very simple. You just need to define a resource that is called AWS SFN state machine. You have to set the name, a role that the step function is going to assume when it's running. The definition is the AWS step function itself. A step function is a state machine described in a simple JSON format. So let's describe ours. Start step will be called validate. And then let's describe all the states. The type is task and then the resource is the ARN of the lambda we created. The next property is the next step that we're gonna go after this validate step is complete. I also included a catch block, so in case of error, we'll go to the exception as the next step. Now let's do the process step. Same type, resource is a different ARN of course, and then the next step will be succeeded. So let's just create it. And is equal true, type pass. Let's do the exception step. Now the failed. So if there is exception, go to the field step. So that's all we need for the step function. The missing part now is just to create the environment in Terraform that's going to call this module. So let's create a new folder here for our dev01 environment. And then let's create one Terraform, which is going to be called config.tf. But it could be any name. So let's create some variables, region, jar file, environment prefix we're gonna need that and then the lambda role layer n that you copied from the AWS console and then let's set the provider as AWS profile is the provider we created when you configure it in CLI remember now let's call the 
core module that we created before. So this is how you call it. Just put the location of where it is plus the variables that you need on that module. Region, jar file, SNS topic. Oops, let's pick that. Let's just keep it blank for now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done. Let's test this thing. Okay, terminal. Maven clean package install. Let's just compile the project. Fingers crossed there's no compilation issues. Okay, build success. That's good. The jar file is there. So far so good. Let's run the Terraform now. CD Terraform environment dev01. This is my config file created. Let's just do Terraform in it to initialize Terraform in this folder. This will just download the plugins necessary for that specific Terraform file. Now let's do Terraform apply. So this will apply the changes into AWS, if any. So because it's a new project, it's just going to do everything. Low. So the plan is add this, add this, and add this. So three lambdas and the state machine. Okay, so plan four to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. Type yes, enter, and now wait. So it will basically update your jar file for every single lambda that you have. In the future, let's optimize this because I think it's gonna upload three times the same file, one for each lambda. We can optimize that in the future. Okay, apply complete. No errors, that's good. So let's test this. Search for lambdas. Let's just make sure our lambdas are there. Okay, so we should have three lambdas. Yes, demo exception, demo validate, demo process. So now let's go to step functions. Okay, there should have one step function, main workflow. Yes, that's the one we're looking for. Start the execution. So now I have a sample JSON that we're gonna use to start the step function. This will simulate the event from S3 which is the JSON that we are expecting. Okay, start execution. Blue, blue is good, it's in progress. So just remember that this is a Java Lambda, so it takes time to initialize the JVM. And then, okay, now everything is green. That's great. So let's take a look at the execution input, make sure that's what we're expecting. And then if you click on the step, there is a step input and step output. That's the input and output for the step. And then if you click on another step like pro process, same thing, step input, step output. So the codes are here, that's great. No exception, succeeded. Let's check the logs. CloudWatch logs. If you ever wanna see the logs, this is how they look like. Okay, and then Whatever you do, system of print line is going to be here. 